Patella tendinopathy, or tendinitis as it's sometimes referred, causes pain just below the kneecap or right on top of the shin bone. So in this video, I'll provide some rehab exercises to relieve the symptoms. Hi everyone, and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard, and today I'm going to provide rehab exercises if you're suffering from patella tendinopathy. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice, and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. So first of all, what is patella tendinopathy? Well, it's characterized by a pain on the front of the knee where the patella tendon, or patella ligament to give it its correct term, attaches the kneecap, or patella, to the shin bone or more specifically the tibial tuberosity. The pain is normally felt where this ligament attaches to the bone rather than in the belly of the ligament itself and it's generally caused when the load on it exceeds its capacity and it's more common in people that do sports or physical training that involves jumping. This microtrauma to the ligament causes pain and loss of function or ability to continue performing the same movements. The natural reaction to the pain would be to rest it but this can have a detrimental effect, reducing the ligament's capacity and therefore making the condition worse. Some people use ice to reduce the inflammatory response, or they might stretch the quads to relieve the tension on it, use a foam roller on the quads, or directly massage the ligament itself. But most research shows that building the capacity of the ligament through strength training will in turn reduce pain and increase functional movement again. Therefore, there are three stages of rehabilitation that you can follow to help you restore function and get back to full fitness again. These are, number one, isometric or static strength exercises, which you can start from day one of your symptoms. Two, isotonic or dynamic strength exercises, which you can gradually phase into your rehab. And three, plyometric or explosive strength exercises, although this third stage is very activity or sport specific, so wouldn't necessarily be required for everyone to get their function back for day-to-day -day activities. The rehabilitation period to get back to your normal everyday function could take anywhere between three months and up to a year. It's likely that the pain will continue to persist during the majority of your rehab stages, but you will be able to do more before observing the same level of pain, showing that the load capacity is increasing because you're seeing improved changes in functional ability. Let's now look at the various stages and what exercises you can do. Here are some ideas for isometric exercises that challenge the muscle tissue around the knee and in particular the quadriceps muscles. Isometric exercises load the muscle and connective tissue without any movement so should be performed statically. The exercise you choose will be dependent on your preference as to which one you find tolerable or challenging enough and what equipment or facilities are available to you. The seated straight leg lift is a good start point if your tendinopathy is particularly bad or your quadriceps are very weak. Locking your knee joint out first to activate the quads and then raising a foot off the floor a few inches and holding it will really target the muscles on the front of the thigh. If you have access to a gym with a leg extension machine, then you can vary the weight accordingly so that you can lift it with the affected leg only until you reach about a 60 degree bend in the knee and hold the weight in that position. Another intermediate level isometric exercise is the wall sit with your back flat against the wall and your knees and hips bent at 90 degrees so your thighs remain parallel to the floor. The stronger or more advanced person may need to perform the Spanish squat, where you use an anchored heavy duty resistance band around the back of your knees and you sit down into it so your thighs are parallel to the floor and the torso remains upright. Very similar to the wall set, but a much harder variation. For these isometric exercises, you should aim to be able to hold your chosen exercise position for 45 seconds, which you should find challenging on the quadriceps muscles. After a short rest of about two minutes, repeat the exercise again until you've completed three to five sets and you can perform it every day. It's difficult to say how long you'll be in this stage before moving on to isotonic exercises because everyone will respond slightly differently 
and it's likely that the stages will blend over time. So there is no hard fast rule to a time scale for each stage. In addition, depending on your goal and what you want to be able to do again will depend on whether you need to move on to stage two or three as completing these isometric exercises may be enough to reduce your pain symptoms and give you the function that you need to carry out your daily activities. When you reach the point where you feel you need some exercises that challenge your muscles a bit more than those shown in stage one, then you can start performing some moving or isotonic strength exercises. These are those typically used in any exercise environment, but they should be performed very slowly without any momentum. Here are some examples. Squats are a great start point as they will help build further strength into the quadriceps. This may start out as a box squat where your bottom kisses a chair, bench or box behind you before standing back up. Or the more traditional freestanding squat. In either of these versions, you can increase the intensity by holding weight or you can perform it with the heels raised slightly to increase the workload on the quadriceps. A Bulgarian split squat is a slightly harder version of the squat as it allows you to place more focus on one leg. Make sure your back foot is raised behind you on a chair, bench or box and allow your hips to travel forward slightly as you lower down to place more emphasis on the front leg. Is it safe to move your knee over your toes of your foot? Yes, providing you don't also have any other associated knee conditions that might be aggravated by this increased range of movement. Thirdly, single leg step downs performed with the non-weight bearing leg to the side with the toes pulled back to stop you from pushing off the ball of the foot when you're pushing back up to standing will place more emphasis on the affected leg. You can build the height of the step you're on for increased intensity, but the aim is to keep all of your body weight through the one leg throughout the entire range of motion. If you have access to a leg extension machine in a gym, then performing reps with a moderate to heavy weight on the affected leg will greatly increase your quadriceps strength as being an isolated exercise, it purely targets this muscle group without the aid or support of other muscles in the leg. All of these resistance exercises should be performed at a slow speed that takes you about seven seconds for each repetition. This is three seconds to lower your body weight, a one second pause at the bottom, then a three second lift of your body weight. For the leg extension machine, three seconds to lift the weight, one second with your leg held straight, and then three seconds to lower it back down. Just pick one or two exercises that work for you at a level of intensity that you can manage six to 10 repetitions for three to four sets on two or three days a week. The third stage won't be applicable to everyone because it's much more activity specific. But if you are a basketball or volleyball player, gymnast or martial arts practitioner where jumping is an integral part of your training regime, then the following two exercises will help build up your tolerance for this type of activity. The first is jump squats, ensuring that your jumping mechanics are performed correctly so that your knees remain in alignment throughout the jump and the balls of the feet are the last part of your foot to leave the ground and the first part of the foot to make contact on landing. The exercise should be done explosively but not to gain a cardiovascular effect, but rather a quality load on the muscles around the knee. The second example, which places more emphasis on the one leg, is the step jumping lunge. Here, it's important to make sure that the torso doesn't collapse forwards when you land, inadvertently taking pressure off the front thigh muscles. So only perform this movement if you can do it with a good technique. The aim for these two exercises is to load the muscle eccentrically but then quickly contract the muscle concentrically to get the explosive movement back to the start. Aim to perform six to 10 repetitions of this movement for three to four sets on two or three days a week. When rehabilitating patellar tendinopathy through strength training, it's important to listen to your body to monitor how it responds during the exercise, immediately after, as well as the following day to notice any changes in pain or function, as this will help you modify the load by changing the volume, intensity, or frequency of your chosen exercises. Using a pain scale of zero to 10, where 10 represents the worst possible pain, 
If you feel pain during the exercise of about three to five, so it's tolerable, then this is okay and won't be doing any harm. However, if on your next session the pain is higher doing the same exercise, then it's likely that you overdid it the day or two before. So in summary, although it might feel frustrating, be careful not to overdo it too much too soon. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.